WRTR Real Talk Radio Featured guest DJs Original shows The hottest DJs from around the world Slavery is white history How we survived it and continue to excel That's black history Welcoming you to a new week here on WRTR Real Talk Radio It is holiday week Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever that you celebrate It's on and it's this week How y'all be? Chilling like a villain. I'll Chicken be, man. Make me sweat. Make oh. me hotter. Make oh. me lose my breath. Make me water. Hey. No. That sounds like <laughs> diarrhea. Cha cha cha. <laughs> you sound a little runny there, friend. What's going on? You need whatever. Some whatever. I'm Capto. good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, they You're sell things. <laughs> they sell things for that. Yeah. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, good. I'm just imagining. I'm, good. I'm just imagining being with somebody and be like, "Ooh, make me wider." I'll be like, "Get out! Get out! <laughs> Get out!" <laughs> <laughs> just uh, hey, okay. a mess. A mess. Anyway, yes, so we're kicking yes, off yes. this Christmas week for you all. Um, let's start it off. What did you learn, Black, this week? For all you ho ho hoes. Ho ho ho. Let's get ho, into ho, it. Ho, ho. I learned black. And this is the first time I'm going first. Hey. You better do it. You better okay, because I was prepared. Yeah. All right. So what I learned <laughs> black, real black this week uh, was black. a lady by the name of Claudine Gay, who previously was a dean of arts and sciences at Harvard University, became the 30th president of the Ivy League institution this year. Ooh. She's the first black woman to be yes. president of that school. Period. What was the name of the school? Harvard University. Did you forget? Did you, did you forget uh, Harvard? Mm. Harvard. No so you know man. white people are real mad. White people are mad. And white people are mad. plotting. But you know what? That's so uh, sad that it is 2023 and we still are experiencing the first black thing uh white people anyways that anyway what i man? learned black was black. tennessee tennessee hbcu hey. partnership holds a historic graduation inside of a prison wow. so there were six men that are were incarcerated at the northwest correct correctional complex Marched across the stage to receive their Bachelor of Science and Business degree mm -hmm. from Lane College. I know that's right. Damn. Now, my thing is, I congratulate them for getting their bachelor's, but they still not they still may not be able to get a job. Why? Wow. Because you already know it's hard for um, the people who was incarcerated to get jobs. But guess oh. what? They don't need to ask nobody for no job. That's why they can open up their mm. own business. That too. Exactly. They can't do that if they're approved for loans and things like that. Well, hopefully they got a lot still of... They, you still, they do that whole background check before they approve all that stuff stuff like that anyway. So That's but true. But congra congratulations to them. Very much Hopefully so. they got a good support system when they get out. And I hope also, so. It'll help. And also... Um, What did it say? Mm. This was the oh, don't do that. <laughs> make oh me wash. Hey, make me swear. <laughs> don't do any of that. I said the students were also the first in the state of Tennessee to receive degrees from a historically black college and university. Okay. All right. Damn. Yes. Huh. Well, let me tell y'all about this black amazingness. A lady named Thelma Jones. Is a ninety-year-old. Yeah, I knew that I was black. That was Thelma. my grandmother's name, Thelma. Thelma Jones, a ninety-year-old black woman from Southfield, Michigan, recently earned her fifth degree black belt in karate, and I she is that. not playing in the top just mm -hmm. there, didn't you? I saw that. Right. She has been practicing karate for fifty years, and, and still she continues. said, "Fuck around to find out." Did she? <laughs> She said, He's fuck around and find out. Oh, girl has been taking karate lessons three times a week in Southfield 
uh, it's apparently called Southfield Martial Arts. Mm-hmm. And it's like, despite her age, her instructor, who is a 77 year old grandma, a grandmaster with a 10th degree black belt, said that anyone who knows Miss Jones would say <coughs> that she is tough. Um, apparently when she was 60 years old, she was able to defend herself from robbers at a bus, at a bus stop. So I know that's right. She said, run up on me. Y'all ain't jump up to get beat down. If you're failing froggy leap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. Right. Is she in her nineties, right? She is 90 years old. That's amazing. She kick ass at 90. That's how I want to be. At 90 years old. I want to be her when I grow up because uh-huh. at 90 years old, I want to be able to kick ass. I, I just, and, I and, 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 and for her to be black too, because it's normally the, um, the Asians that are up at that age and they, you know, still they kicking say ass. Yeah. still kicking ass. Yeah. Very much Punching so. through yeah. bricks and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I, actually, I had another one too. What's one? I had another one. All right, go for it. Cause, cause shout out for, to the, to the ladies, man. We, yes. I need to recognize the black women. All right. So last week, um, Yasmin Imani McMorin made history as the first black woman mayor of Culver City, California on mm. December 11th of this Again. year. All right, girl. Mm. Another black woman. All right, Yasmin. Doing it. All right, Yasmin. Yes. We love White people are it. shook. We in right, Harvard. Yasmin. We at Harvard. We out here kicking your ass as elderly. We yeah. out here, like we just we doing it. We and doing um, it. Yale yeah. too. If I'm not mistaken, Yale too. Yale I know too. that's right. I know Yale that's too. right. Mm-hmm. That's Oppress good. Oppress this definitely. black greatness, bitches. Oppress <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Yes, so up yes, first, yes. if it were lyric, we'll be right back. So my nieces and nephews love to say, uh, y'all keep talking about how wild we are. Y'all used to do shit back in the day. And we did. But bitch, not like y'all do today. One thing that we did back in the day that y'all don't do today is take a bath. Y'all stink. Even y'all shooters stink, bitch. You don't need that big ass gun. Just raise your arm, sir. Okay, it will be a terrorist attack out this motherfucker. Everybody would die by suffocation, bitch. Even some of these girls out here stink. They smell like pee-pee. It's on their fingertips. Fuck, she was playing with a lesbian with a bladder problem. Y'all don't use your brain and you steal every motherfucking thing. This woman late for work. She stop at the gas station. She running the gas station to fill her tank up. You jump in her car and drive the fuck off, slow bitch. That's the reason why she stopped at the gas station. Because there wasn't no gas in the car. So you don't go far. So the car break down on you. You pull out your phone. Get on Instagram. Yeah, my ride broke down. Like it's really yours. You done told on yourself, bitch. About time you get to the next corner. The police jump out. Freeze, thief. And now you in jail. See, back in our day when the thieves was thieving, they stole shit that the hood can use. TV, VCR, DVD players. Shit that brought us together as a community. Because we got to sit around the TV, bitch, even though we got it for free 99, bitch, and watch our favorite shows and laughed and enjoyed each other company. This new generation, they just do weird shit. Y'all be robbing y'all neighbors. Back in the day, our neighbors, they fed us when our parents and shit was too high to cook. And then when it comes to these drugs and shit, you motherfuckers are guinea pigs in a science lab. Y'all try any motherfucking thing. Back in our day, they hit shit like love boat. Shit with abbreviation and letters, PCP. You motherfuckers smoking sounds, Zaza. Fuck is that, an African beat? Now, the drugs from back in the day made you do two things, hallucinate or take a quick nap. You hit that motherfucking PCP, you think you sitting on ants. Why the world moving? Shit like that. You hit that dope, you nod off. But as soon as you feel a motherfucker go into your pocket, bitch you up. Oh, but this new shit y'all taking in this generation? Bitch, you at the bus stop in the motherfucking coma. Sleep, legs locked, standing up. You been raped by three motherfucking people, robbed by five, and beaten by the op. All in 30 minutes. Then, y'all motherfuckers don't got no loyalty or no honor. Back in the day, the streets looked out for their hood. Not you motherfuckers today. A shootout come, bitch. Y'all jumping behind y'all aunts and y'all grandmothers. Why the fuck you think I don't be outside with my nephew? I don't trust them. These motherfuckers are scared. I mean, no disrespect. I love them through the phone. Every time he call, I treat his ass like a jail call. Yeah, keep your head up out there. Oh, I don't got no money. Click. I mean, back in the day, we just had morals and respect. Now in the day, y'all motherfuckers outside with ski masks in disguise. Y'all don't give a fuck. Come up off that shit, ma. 
She looking like, Ray Ray, is that you? Not today. Not today. Pull up a seat. Lyric Lyric Radio. Radio. At Lyric Bravado on Twitter. What's going on, y'all? I'm back with another segment of If It Were Lyric. Child, right. let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Y'all and these letters that y'all be sending me <laughs> are wild. Okay? Straight wild. But that's okay because I'm here to give my two cents about it on your situationships, friendships, relationships, and all that in between. If you want to continue to get your letter read on air, send mm-hmm. it to lyricbravado at gmail.com or send a DM to my Twitter or my Facebook or my Instagram at Lyric Bravado. Yes, All right, yes, so yes. y'all got um, one for me? Sure. This is your boy Ticket Man, and I guess I'll go first. It's not that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the hell up. Anyway, this come from this is come from um Lauren. She says, Dear Lyric. My husband is desperate for women's attention, and I'm sure he'd cheat on me the instant he had the chance. We have been together for 12 years. When we met, he was 24 and I was 31. I realize now that I, that while I have had four long-term relationships and a fair share of sexual partners, my husband has had little sexual experience outside of our relationship. <laughs> Anytime he's around women, whether I am there or not, he makes it a point to strike up a conversation or gain their attention. It doesn't matter if they're young or old, attractive or not. He has fostered many friendships with women I don't know, like gas station attendants or, <laughs> or his employer's office staff. He swears he has never cheated and I have never found any solid proof other than pornography. I just can't shake this feeling that he needs or wants to experience or he wants to experience other women and I don't know what to do please help I mean have you asked him because it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like everybody that talks to him you're accusing him of being with the one to talk to right. can we like normalize conversation just regular conversation just, right. just a little bit that anything just weird kinda. going on I think in your situation, since you haven't found any proof, I think it's giving insecure. I think it's giving that he's just overly friendly, maybe. Uh Maybe that makes you uncomfortable. Um, But that's 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 not a that's not a negative personality trait, though. Like people can we need more people like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, how you doing? This, that, and the third. Like, you never know what somebody is going through. And your, hey, how are you doing? Might change the course of their day. Uh-huh. So I don't think that, I don't really think that he's cheating porn. That's, come on, everybody watches it. Like, everybody watches it. If you knew the list that I've seen from Pornhub, you know everybody is watching it, okay? So, okay, but- I don't, I really don't think that it's a, it's a thing going on. What about what about the fact that she's she was twenty four and he was thirty one? Like so she's seven like years, about seven years older was, than him. When I was thirty one, that's really not a big, humongous gap. It would if it was like fifteen years, I would be like, oh, he's trying to run gay. Yeah, I mean, and to me, that's for not really a, yeah, that's not really a, a a huge huge age gap to me. Really? I don't no, know. No, because I, you got to think most women are are mature, true. mature faster okay. than than men. I guess so, dealing with men. Uh, dealing with men at probably, 31, Jesus. Yeah. You couldn't do nothing but get my postmates at 31. Or if you was 24 and I was 30. Okay, anyway. <laughs> it's a different time now, too, though. It's uh-huh. a different time now. That's very true. All right, my turn. I always get the anonymous ones. What is up with that? Mm-hmm. Y'all never want to tell me y'all name. Because of the way we clown them, you know, we, be like, <laughs> we be clowning people. But I mean, I think that we genuinely give good help, though. I, mean, I right. think so too. All right, so th- this one's anonymous. Dear Larry, I've been with my boyfriend for almost four years, and recently got an email saying my Tinder account was going to be deleted. We met on Tinder, and I wanted to take screenshots of our initial conversation to look back and laugh about before my account got deleted. 
I logged on to see that my boyfriend had a new picture on his profile oh. that I had taken of him three months ago. I oh. asked him about it, and at first he played dumb and confused. So I confronted him <laughs> about it, and eventually he ended up admitting he goes on there to check out what's going on and Real. uses the app like porn. I made mm. him show me his account and he wasn't matched with anyone since we started dating. And my account is actually the last one he responded to. Turns out he goes on to look at girls only to swipe left on them and to oh. reread old pretty conversations. Oh. I'm fine with him watching porn, but this seems oddly personal and like a weird ego trip. I feel really grossed out and overall confused. Would you call this cheating? Girl, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, because I don't know about Tinder. I've never had a Tinder account. So I, I had to do one. a little research. Mm-hmm. Turns one. out that you can delete the footage, bitch. You can delete the matches, bitch. You can oh. delete the conversations. So he may very well be Swiping, swiping, swiping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep, they keep, keep. Swiping, swiping, typing, swiping. typing, typing. And but are niggas that dumb? Are niggas yes! that dumb? Are you kidding like, me? God. First of all, why do you have Come a new on. profile picture? Why are you on the hunt? Right. Exactly. Yeah, if you so, put enough yeah, new pictures and you in a whole relationship, that's very suspicious. It's Something ain't right. First of all, why are you even on Tinder? My thing is, why are you even on Tinder? If you're in a relationship, why are you even on Tinder? He said that he was checking it out. He was seeing what was going on. First of all, you're what? using it like For porn. What? There's For too what? many porn sites that you can exactly. go on if you want to exactly. say that. He's definitely doing well, something shit, that he hell, don't want you to know fucking, about. You can go on fucking Twitter and watch it. Go on, sure CNN. go on CNN. Go on CNN. Learn about <laughs> shit. CNN. Learn about shit that's happening Not in the world CNN. there. Do that. First Not of all, CNN. open a book. Not CNN. Girl, yeah, I would definitely consider that cheating because if he wouldn't do it in front of you and sit there and swipe, swipe, swipe in front of you, then yeah, it's cheating because he's hiding it. He's hiding it. He's hiding it. And it's a dating Uh, app, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm All right. So, this boyfriend number two. (laughs) Make yourself water. (laughs) All right. Where where about yourself, Queen? (laughs) You said you was going to do yours last, right? No. Um. Oh shoot. Yeah. Or did you so, want yep. to? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, I got one more, and this one comes from Tiffany. No relation. Oh, an- not another, <laughs> another Tiffany. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not mine. Another Thank Tiffany. You. Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dear Larry, I went mm-hmm. to visit a man I was dating, and there was no visitor parking available. Ooh. He told me to park in any space, even though there were signs stating non-residents will be told. He said mm-hmm. not to worry about it. Bitch, you know, be, funny. Right, that I'd be there only a few hours. You Nothing reading my say. story. You Hold on, didn't this happen to me? Are you reading my story? No, like, I'm not. Shut up. Shut to say. Your name's I not Jeff. Right. Continue. Shut <laughs> up. Shut to say. I got told. <laughs> he did. <laughs> He did drive me to the tow yard to retrieve my car, but he didn't offer to pay for my tow charge or even half of it. I thought it would have been nice of him to at least offer and that his not often offering demonstrated lack of character. Yes, I know I chose to believe him at my own risk and that I'm responsible for my choices, but I trusted his information. In your opinion, did the de- did that demonstrate questionable character on his part? Absolutely, because he knows about his his living situation where he live at, and he knew good and well that she was gonna get told. He just didn't care. He didn't right. care because he wanted them cheeks. The and once you gave them cheeks up, he was like, "Oh yeah. well, you know, ah, you ain't gotta go home, but you got to get up out of here. I'll take you to where you need to go. Go pick up your car." And the fact that he can offer to at least even pay half means that he is not sorry. He's not mm. sorry, and he'll do it again. Girl, run. Run fast. Run for the hills. Run for the hills. Because he is not for you. He's for them streets. Period. Mm. For them streets. Mm. You better stay out them streets. Girl, yeah. <laughs> Make me sweat. Make me call you know an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb. <laughs> 
<laughs> you are dumb. <laughs> you dumb. Oh, All right, so this last one, this last one I posted online. So, um, yeah, let's just go right into it. it says, dear Lyric, please don't, uh, please do not use my real name. You can call me whatever. I have a question for your advice segment and want to know what you think. My best friend of 27 years moved away four years ago for work. And because of the craziness with the pandemic in our lives, we weren't able to see one another in person. This was someone I grew up with that is part of my family. So she never had to worry about a place to stay when she visits. Well, that was until about two years ago. On one of our marathon FaceTime uh, talks, <clears throat> she shared with me her recent herpes diagnosis. I remember it being super a super emotional time for her, and we have spent money. <coughs> Why are y'all falling out? The face her? that took advantage of me. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Continue. <laughs> On one of our marathon, the marathon Facebook talks, she shared with me her recent herpes diagnosis. I remember it being a super emotional time for her and we have spent many a night on the phone crying together and working her way through the symptoms and outbreaks. Just doing the thing that friends slash family do for one another. My issue is that recently she started hinting at the possibility of coming back to visit. Where I can hardly wait to see her, I find myself getting super paranoid about her diagnosis and find myself concerned that one of the kids will use the toilet after her or because she will be in my spare bedroom on my mattress, whether or not I will have to replace it. <laughs> I hate that I hate that I even have these concerns and reading this back, it sounds awful, but it's truly how I feel. Do you think I'd be wrong to suggest she stay at a hotel instead of my home, even if I help her with the cost? How can I suggest this to her without hurting her feelings with love, whatever name you all can <laughs> Ah, I'm I'm gonna call you misinformed. <laughs> misinformed. <laughs> because that is not the way that works. I cannot. <laughs> Let me get this laugh out. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that there are really people in existence that really think that you can get herpes from a toilet seat. Girl, there's people. There's people in America. There's people in America that believe Trump is telling the truth. Oh so, my I mean, god! Okay, so misinformed. Mm -hmm. This is not how that works. <laughs> if you go on Google, mm, just, just type search. in cdc.gov. Huh? Type in your question. It will huh? say you will not get herpes from toilet seats, bedding or swimming pools. You will mm. also not get it from touching objects such as silverware, soaps, or towels. Mm. If you have any additional questions, ask your healthcare provider. Because, yeah. girl, I know you lying. You sat there and cried with your friend, consoled your friend, patted her all on, the, on the back, making her, you know, feel a little better about her diagnosis, and then you gonna try to act like she is, she got leprosy or something like she can't <laughs> like this that's what? wild that is. is wild and I really wild. question your friendship because all you had to do was do your own research if that's truly your friend and you wanted to help her you should have did it when she told you her diagnosis so you uh, can just help her with stuff that's uh -huh. helpful but you sitting here trying to shun her oh she can't come in my house my kids oh I might get herpes you, you dead ass wrong mm. You dead ass wrong, mm. and I wouldn't. I wouldn't fuck with you no more if it was me. <sighs> it's one Period. of the many things. Period. Oh bye. Mm. But anyway, well, that's all water. I got to say for this week. <laughs> Y'all tune in for the new year because it's gonna be. Some crazy stuff, I'm pretty sure, because y'all gonna bring some baggage into 2024. I already know. You already know that. And can y'all please stop know. with the new year and new me? Really? <laughs> y'all oh, still gonna be doing the same bullshit. You, know, you already know that's not gonna happen. You gonna be doing the same that, bullshit that, in 2024. That's every year. Uh, so, since this is the last one for this year, I will say this to all of our listeners that listen to me. Um, my segment and send me advice questions bring into the new year this do whatever makes you happy if it no longer makes you happy then leave it alone leave it in this year that could be a person place thing whatever the case may be if it doesn't bring you happiness and it doesn't increase your good energy 
leave it where it's at and keep it pushing. Till next time, I'll see you guys in 2024. A wise person once said that abuse is a team sport in the sense that everyone claims to be against domestic violence and sexual abuse until it's time to actually support a victim. Then it becomes clear that society is so okay with abuse that abusers don't even have to come up with their own justifications. Everyone else will do it for them. We interrogate victims about their choice in clothing or what they did to put themselves in that situation. We tell young girls to go upstairs or put on longer shorts because creepy Uncle Bob is coming over. We ask victims of domestic violence why they didn't just leave even though the most dangerous time in an abusive relationship is when you're trying to leave. The system is often no help. These abusers get a slap on the wrist until they actually kill someone. And that's because society is so okay with abuse that rather than protection, women are just offered cheat codes on how to deal with it. Society is so okay with abuse that even women with wealth and visibility are not shielded from it. A superstar is beaten and she had to have done something to provoke him. A superstar is shot and she's a thought and a liar so we can't trust her. A legend was abused and we treat it as a joke in pop culture. Black America's sweetheart, a woman who never had a bad word said about her, was abused with photographic evidence and it turned into a narrative about mutual abuse. Society is so okay with abuse that the music industry, the film industry, and even the world of politics are filled with predators and abusers. Society is so okay with abuse that it can't even recognize when men and little boys are violated because they're treated as sexual beings from birth. Society is so fucking okay with abuse that domestic violence is most always an escalation that starts with controlling behavior, yet y'all still tell y'all daughters that the most valuable thing they can offer a man is submission. So I say all this to say that as much as everybody claims to be against domestic violence and sexual abuse, it's clear that not only is it tolerated, as a society, we allow abusers to thrive. And sip on this key with Tiger Man on WRTR Real Talk Radio and Tiger Man 82 on IG. Hey, 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 this is your boy Tiger Man back with another segment of Trolling with Tiger Man. <clears throat> now, when I say trolling, I mean trolling social media for celebrity gossip, international news, local news, and what may be going on in your bedroom. How about that? So anyway, first up, we have uh, the one and only, the legendary Celine Dion. Y'all heard that she's, um, oh, why are you lying? I mean, why are you laughing? Go ahead. Why are you laughing? I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure y'all heard of, um, she has a, 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 a rare condition. What is that the rare girl, condition? It's called um, Stiff Syndrome. Where what is that? Could... <laughs> I feel like I got Stiff Syndrome now. My back hurt. Where It's basically where you can um, lose control of your um, muscles in your body. Oh, so that stuff Roseanne had when she was racist. Got it. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. It causes like painful muscle spasms no, and things bad. like that. Um, well, her current condition, well, her prior condition was she was just having muscle spasms, but her okay. um, sister, well, her sister just, um, came out and spoke to the media and was basically saying like, now she's, um, losing control of her muscles in her body. Oh, wow. At the moment. So hopefully, hopefully she can recover from that. So she won't be doing no kind of shows or tours at the moment because of this condition but um hopefully she will recover from that but i would that's something that i would never want to have is a uh, stiff syndrome stiff person syndrome that's why is your mouth wide open because i got motherfucking breaking news all right and it's probably something i'm gonna bring up too but anyway moving on from the um celine we have taraji p henson Mm-hmm. She basically is tired of working her butt off in Hollywood and being paid a fraction of what she feels she's worth. I don't see any problem. 
getting emotional over what she says is a huge pay gap. So the um, act, actress broke down in tears when asked if she was um, considering quitting acting. Um, telling she was, I guess she was speaking with um, Gail King, mm -hmm. and she says she feels uncertain about her on-screen career and her money's that that's her main factor. Um, she um, said that she's still being pay underpaid for big movie roles despite being a well-established and super famous action actress reaching mm -hmm. a boiling point. And um, she says she's just getting tired of it and it's not fair. She feels that she should be getting paid way more than what she's being paid. She said um, one of her um, movie gigs, she was um, offered $10 million. Are you but that's serious? Not, but that's not what she received, though. Of course after, not. After taxes was taken... She had a, a lump sum, but she also had to um, pay her people, like her stylist and her manager yeah. and all that other stuff. So after that, she's just really left. She's not really left with a lot of money. Yeah, it costs a lot to be fly. And yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm saying it, it does. It costs a lot. And Taraji, Taraji, uh, like when she shows up, that girl puts in work. That one. Yes, she works. does. Yes, she does. She does a good job she does everything that she's asked of even in acrimony now yes. god knows that movie was awful again, <laughs> and nobody can still they explain why, how she got on the boat nobody can explain that how she got on the boat however <laughs> however it she yeah. brought it when she showed up she showed she showed up and she showed out so yeah it's what it is cool. yep 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 and next we well, ne next we have up your boy jonathan majors mm. Why is that my I'm boy? upset about him. Mm. Well, he is out of a job at Disney now really? with uh, Marvel. They've dropped him because of his um, his uh, guilty verdict that just happened a few days ago in court. Um, <clears throat> so he's um, losing out on a lot of money because he had he had a couple of um, Mar Marvel movies that um, he's supposed to be starring in. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them was um he'll be starting as um Kang the Conqueror, but that's not gonna happen now. Right. Because of this whole thing. Um and he's just losing out on a lot of stuff now. I'm pretty sure y'all saw that video that <clears> was <throat> um aired on social media. The altercation with him and um homegirl, his ex girlfriend, where I guess it looks like they were scuffling in the car or whatever and he was trying to get out and he started running. <laughs> He started running and she was chasing after him. I heard about oh, this, but I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, Lord. He was gone. And she was chasing right after behind him. He was trying mm. to get away from her, but she was chasing him. She ran him down. Jesus. Yeah. Did you watch that, then, sir? I sure did. <laughs> that was a He's a runner. He's a track star. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what that was. Basically, that's mm. what that was. So he, he was found guilty on one count of reckless assault. And in the third degree of guilty of harassment. Jesus. I can't lie. I did laugh when I seen the <laughs> He was gone. <laughs> he was gone. The video. Yeah, I was like, that, uh. You, you when remember I when... The, when I saw the video, though, they showed a clip like he was trying to get out of the car and she was like grabbing him or whatever. Mm -hmm. and he was trying to get away from her. Mm. That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> I didn't see him actually physically assaulting her. Nobody like he did. Right. But they you know they gotta make it as an example out of a black man mm -hmm. in Hollywood yeah. and any chance they get. So, <laughs> hey, so, when I seen that video because you remember when <laughs> R. Kelly got when R. Kelly got interviewed by Gail. Oh my god, like, yes. I'm yes, fighting yes, for yes, my yes. life. I'm fighting for my life. And Gail <laughs> looked at him like <laughs> Gail looked at him like <laughs> That's she who really should have been like, He so, ran like he was like, fighting for his life. Yeah, honey. she said. Yeah. She, she said. Girl was like, shoot, those young girls was fighting for their life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have Blueface again. He, I don't he stay. He stays in the media. I'm hanging. Out. This time, me too. Ooh. He might be getting um. <laughs> he might be getting sued by um. One of his, um, one of the, uh, I guess the uh, people that was in the audience, um, him and his new girlfriend, his new girlfriend, baby mama, whatever, um, Jaden, Alexis, they, um, but I guess they were both performing on stage. She ain't new. 
She, I mean, she, she's not new. She's not new. I think he already have a he already have a kid by her already. Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. They with were high her school before, sweethearts. Right, he was with her before he was with Krishan. Mm-hmm. Then now he ain't with Krishan. Now he back with her. And so I guess they was performing on stage or whatever. And supposedly some girl threw some ice on the stage or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he reached down in the audience and grabbed her, grabbed mm-hmm. her, pulled her on the stage, and then threw her, tossed her off over towards where um Jaden was at and told Jaden to beat her up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all remember going to con- y'all remember to going to concerts where people didn't throw shit on the stage? Y'all remember exactly. That? Yeah. Where people were respectful and they were actually falling out <laughs> in shock and awe mm-hmm. when they saw their favorite artists. I remember yeah, going I remember to Kid Cudi uh, to a Kid Cudi concert and getting a contact high. I remember that. I mean, mm-hmm. but I just don't remember anything of anybody attacking the performer on stage. It just it seems rude. <laughs> just mm-hmm. Seems rude. Yeah, yeah that's no. Rude. The only they time people threw stuff, stuff on stage it was panties. Was... It was panties. Yeah, and brawls. <laughs> Or if you're bad, they were throwing tomatoes. Like, boo, boo, tomato. <laughs> like, they was going out. You, so. you dumb. You dumb. <laughs> but anyway, go on, well, go on forward. It might be on to something. Is that why you're they were throwing shit? Probably. Were you just mm-hmm. mad? You stupid. Uh, next we have, up. Uh, oh, gosh, uh, Nicki Minaj. Okay, so Nicki, Nicki just became the, fam- the, uh, became the female rapper with the most multiple number one albums. Mm-hmm. She just surpassed um, Foxy Brown because mm-hmm. it was Foxy Brown, but now she didn't surpass Foxy Brown. And you know her and Foxy Brown are like buddy buddy. Mm-hmm. So when this news was announced, Foxy Brown decided to go on social media and um, congratulate Nikki on her new album Pink Friday Two. Okay, which is trash. Anyway, which I have not. I hate to say it. I'm but not said, doing it. I, I couldn't even listen to the whole thing. I only mm-hmm. listened to like four songs and I cut it off. Mm. But yeah. And so she basically went on social media um, giving shouts out to um, Nicki Minaj. That's my girl. Da, 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 da. Meanwhile, she threw shade too. Okay. And I think she threw it towards Lil' Kim. Oh, but okay. She didn't say Lil' Kim. She just said rappers, other rappers. Mm. But what she said was, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh uh-uh, uh. Right. <laughs> Can we get some lots and just anyway? So she went on social media and she said, only Nikki can beat my record, putting bum chicks on notice for um twenty-four for um, twenty twenty-four. <laughs> That's basically Girl. what she said. Uh, and so, of course, everybody was like, ooh, she throwing shots at the younger girls and Lil' Kim. Uh, if Those anybody, like, wh- why? Okay, never mind. Just go ahead. <laughs> Just go ahead. Mm-hmm. In other news, the Quaker Oats Company what? has been issued. <laughs> what? The Quaker the Quaker Oats Company has been issued a nationwide recall on dozens of its granola bars and cereals. Yeah. They are saying there are um (laughs) they're saying that they're um, contaminated with salmonella. With white people. With (laughs) coal. And guess what? So anybody who has excuse me. So anybody who has bought granola bars and um, this is granola cereals. Uh, get rid of it. Mm. What you got? What you got to say? Too late. There? <laughs> I ate them. <laughs> I bought some at the beginning of the year, and Amazon sent me an email talking about some. Uh, hey, hey now, hey now, <laughs> hey girl, hey, hey girl, girl hey. guess what? <laughs> guess what? Guess <laughs> what? Hey girl, you so, might want to. Um... You might want to make sure mm-hmm. <laughs> you have any so of those. Like, those... I don't. So you remember those but... Quakers that you bought from us, girl? Um, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, there was some little mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> you might get the bubble guts. I don't even you know. Might I get the guts. I did or I didn't. But I know that I had to fill out a form because they sent a link for um the recall of the mm. products. And yeah, they're going to send me a reimbursement check. Oh, no, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's what you're going to do. Yeah. Trying to Run kill me. Call. 
Hey, 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 I yeah. don't eat anything Blame with man. that white man on there. Go ahead. You know what? I cannot. <laughs> anyway. don't eat, okay. He's scary. He's scary. Don't eat grits. Time, so. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I know you're lying. You don't eat grits? No. Oh, I don't eat grits. grits? Oh, I no. Eat grits. I eat grits. I love grits. Okay. I make some, some good grits. Salt, too. Some salt, pepper, and butter. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Salt, because pepper, those butter. of you sugar mm. eating grit people, get out of here with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, get no, out of here. It's not a cereal. It's not. That's cream of weed. Sugar does not belong in grass. (laughs) Exactly. Fight your mama. Don't fight me. (laughs) Don't fight me. Oh, Lord. Here come the comments. (laughs) Here come the comments. (laughs) Anyways. Anyways. Okay, so we next up we have Fantasia Barindo. Mm. So she took the social media to call out an Airbnb host for what she alleges to be a racial profiling incident. Uh, Moreno says that she and her family were kicked out of the rental property by the host over a party they had thrown for her son Xavier's birthday. Mm -hmm. In her post that she shared on Twitter, um, she stated that she invited several guests over for the special occasion, which aligned with the number of her reservations, indicating her rightful authority to host people. By midnight, Moreno says the host accused her of throwing the party so loud that it was causing noise outside of the rental. (laughs) She mentioned that her booking didn't mention any restrictions on having people over. Furthermore, the property strongly indicated that other people had gatherings there in the past through the um, presence of amenities, I'm I'm sorry, amenities, such as a jacuzzi, outdoor fire pit, and writing on the wall mentioning the location of the game room and balloon ribbons. Jesus. And so now she's, um, like I said, she's just going on social media saying that she was being racial profiled. Um, I, I do believe that she was. I mean, that's it, how they the get in the, in the Airbnb. Airbnb. <coughs> they do. I mean, I won't even forget that story years ago where the people had got the air, uh, the black women got the Airbnb, and then people had show uh, people had showed up, and because the white neighbors were being nosy and they didn't speak to them, don't y'all remember that story? They had uh, mm-hmm. called the police on them. Police showed up and they were like, oh, well, I mean, had they just said what they were there for? Stop doing that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. It would be the last time. It was the <laughs> Boo. Boo. Uh, that right. it, man? Okay. And hold on, I got another one. Um, okay. Sexy Red. Oh, I thought sexy you were going to Christian Keys. Pant. Oh, oh, you know what? <clears throat> Okay, I can mention him anyway. Okay, right. so Christian Keys, um, he starred in a lot of uh, 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 Tyler Perry movies. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. Um, he's also um, he was what, on. Um, what was the last he movie on... he was in? The um, oh my God, the one all with the um, Queen's Men. Yeah, all the Queen's Men. Um. Yes, all the Queen's Men. He was messing around with um, Home Girl. Mm-hmm. And he What's played the... Constantine's boyfriend in Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, wow. sure did. Mm-hmm. Sure did. That's when all sure the gays did. were hitting him up, and he posted that video talking about <laughs> stop hitting me up. I'm not gay. I just play a gay character. Exactly. So anyway, <laughs> he went to so he went on social media, made a whole social media video, and was like, "There's this very famous male mm-hmm. <laughs> person in the industry. He's he didn't surprised. mention names." But he said on several occasions he was basically b- being sexually assaulted by this person. And, of course, you know who everybody th- think it is, even though he didn't mention the name. Who do they everybody think of that one and only Tyler Perry. Mm. But didn't he <laughs> confirm or didn't what? he say he it was not Tyler or... Yes. I know he kept I know he kept, he kept saying that it was. Or he kept hinting at it, but my whole he thing said is this. the person had a very distinct voice. Right. And I'm like, okay, um, but why do you keep playing game? Like, if you're going to say something, say something. That's where these movements come from. They don't just come from a place of, ooh, let me find out who I tell. It's like one person that already knows that they're mm-hmm. going to be vilified for saying something, but they say, you know what? I'm going to still say it. They do it, and it gives other, it empowers other people to be like, oh, you know what? I thought that happened. 
just to me. This yep. happened to me too. And it just kind of starts a domino effect. But of course, we don't look at it like that. We look at it as, oh, okay, well, this person is just trying to get over blah, blah, blah. Okay, no, right. it's mm-hmm. like, and then you got to understand when you're dealing with people of this caliber in Hollywood, especially, mm-hmm. you have to make sure that all of your ducks are in a row. Because yep, if you're exactly. going to fight fire with fire, you better bring the motherfucker. You better bring it. Yeah. Exactly. Because they will blacklist you and you will not be able to find work for your talent and it's mm-hmm. just it's crappy Ugh, i hate that he's going through that but at the same time i wish that he would i, I just wish that if people would say something if you're going to say something if you're going to be bold enough to open your mouth then follow through quit playing exactly. these games quit saying oh well i got mm, you'll never guess who i like <laughs> news at 11 i might tell you i might not like girls should have get off the pot dude exactly. yeah but he might but i think in my personal opinion, this might not be true, but what makes the most sense to me, I think he's speaking to a lawyer about it. Ah. And I think that, and I think that he has to make sure that he, when he says what he says, there's like no way that something can come back on him. Right. And like, make him feel make make him seem like his character is flawed in any type of way like he could be like lying about anything i think he's mm-hmm. speaking to a lawyer so that's probably why <clears throat> that makes the most sense to me because i mean he's in hollywood and he's mm-hmm. working with all of these people he really has to be careful of how he presents certain things sure. even when it comes to himself so good luck to him though yep and last but not least this was just released Mm-hmm. Well, Cassie, was that what you were talking she... about? There? Nope. <laughs> Even bigger. Uh, uh, okay, well, you can do. You, I'll let you have that one. But Cassie just supposedly she he she just gave the feds um Kim Porter, mm-hmm. um Diddy's uh, baby mama's baby mama burn a phone um to the feds. That? Now in that but in that it's burner a phone in that <laughs> burner phone. <laughs> <laughs> Take There's that. supposedly Take that. a lot of evidence of stuff Diddy didn't did, and it mm-hmm. also involves um Mr. Uh, T D Jakes. Mm-hmm. Gospel mm-hmm. Uncle. Oh my God! <laughs> he's involved in it. Mm-hmm. He's he's involved in it, and he's Woo. been mentioned as a power bottom. No. <laughs> <laughs> Make me water. Listen, <laughs> it's a whole video. It's a whole video of of, of all this of all this stuff he was supposedly did. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Ooh. But it was the Cassie just turned it over to the feds. She wasn't going to do it, but her um her her husband mm-hmm. um her husband um advised her to do it. I her knew it. I her to do it. it. He, t- he I, told her you need to you need to return you need to put um get that to the feds. So mm. a lot of stuff is about to um come out. Mm. First a of lot all, of stuff is about to come out. Water. <laughs> First of all, that psychic lady said it with, yep. six months ago, and yep. Jaguar said it. Jaguar, Jaguar recently did an so. interview and said she knew that <coughs> she had to sit down with Kim before she died. Yep. She she said it. Yep. She said it. She said, I know you did. And I support you 100% in, in, in what you're going to do moving forward. Mm. Nobody listens to the people who they deem as crazy yep. in Hollywood. Yep. Certainly do not. Y'all so, better start a lot listening of stuff, to that Orlando a lot of stuff Brown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who said he gave him the ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> And meanwhile, um, oh, oh my God. The, um, <clears throat> the um, LA rapper, what's his name? Mm. Got um, me lost. The one that was with um, 50 Cent. Mm. There was don't a know. G unit. I don't know. Yeah, because Tony Yayo. The game. The game. Okay. Oh, wow. yeah. He even came out and said some stuff about what the um did he tried Child to do by. to him. <laughs> and guess who else said something? Method Man said See? that he seen Kanye West allegedly. Mm-hmm. In the bathroom performing that mm-hmm. Gawk Gawk 3000. <laughs> Damn. Chow, everything's coming out. All the Lord, skeletons is falling out the motherfucking wow. wow. Everything. But mm. see, I said, that's crazy. Somebody check on straight niggas. <laughs> they, they shook right now. 
Mm-hmm. Listen, so this is this is breaking news. Mm-hmm. All right. This is going to put a cap on all of Hollywood, the entire entertainment world mm-hmm. as we know it. Oh. The names of every single Jeffrey Epstein Express passenger oh, has I just been released. Oh, and it's 116 yep. names, and yep. some oh, of your faves yep. are on it. Yep. Yep. What? I seen that. I, yeah, I saw that. Yes, sir. I just downloaded it. I can't even get through all of it. Woo! Yeah. So <laughs> when I tell you 2024 is about to be some shit. Woo! Mm-hmm. It's about to be some shit. Everybody it's getting It's 150 people. It's 150 oh, names. Oh, my God. How can yep. we leave the year on this kind oh. of cliffhanger? Oh, y'all Woo! think it's a game? You see that? 150. Uh, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Oh, okay. Bring well, anyway, <laughs> that wraps it up for this week's segment of trolling with your boy Tigger Man. <laughs> All righty, up next. Oh, the call Cassidy. Over. There have been at least 74 attacks on U.S. forces named in Iraq and Syria. Here's a crazy idea why don't we get out of those countries? Why the fuck do we have military bases over there? How about you bring our people home? Dismantle those military bases in the fucking countries that don't want us there and stop using our tax dollars to start war with the Middle East. They don't want us there. Let's get out because we don't have any country's military bases on our soil. Just a crazy idea. These people. Dead for that. Time to find out what Marcus is dead for. Into the world of the unseasoned. Oh, the caucasity. So, y'all know these videos <laughs> online <clears throat> where people are clearly making fun of other people where they're cooking, right? Y'all have seen those videos, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I came across this one video where this white woman was cooking fried chicken, and a lot mm-hmm. of the comments were people deservedly dragging her for lack of seasoning. I think she put like salt and pepper or some shit on there. And, you know, I saw in the comments where, you know, a lot of people were going back and forth, but someone in the comments asked where the stigma about black people and chicken came from and why black people get offended by it. So it dawned on me that a lot of people probably don't know what the origin is behind that stigma. So here you go. I found an article online from a University of Missouri professor professor named Carol who studies race and folklore. She said that chickens had long been a part of Southern diets, but they had particularly, you know, they were given primarily to slaves. They were cheap, easy to feed, and a good source of meat. But then she said, (laughs) I'm sorry. What? What happened? I'm laughing laughing at Lyric. I think that's what she eats. Look at the chicken bone. Oh, she's eating the chicken bones. See, there you go. <laughs> it's actually turkey, but same difference. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. If the turkey wing busts down. Well, so there you go. Yeah. But hey. then she said she came uh, then she said came Birth of a Nation, which is D.W. Griffith's uh seminal and supremely racist 1915 silent movie about the supposed heroic founding of the Ku Klux Klan that was a huge sensation when it uh first came out. One of the scenes features a group of actors portraying shiftless black elected officials acting rowdy and cruelly in a legislative hall, painting the message to the audience. These are the dangers of letting niggas vote. Some of the legislators were shown drinking. Others had their feet kicked up on their desk, and one of them was very ostentatiously eating fried chicken. That image really solidified the way white people thought of black people and fried chicken. Smith said that like watermelon, that other food has been a mainstay in racist depictions of black people. Chicken was also a good vehicle for racism uh, because of the way that people eat it. According to the government stats, blacks are underrepresented amongst watermelon consumers. It's a food you eat with your hands and therefore it's dirty. Schmidt said table manners are a way of determining uh, who is worthy of respect or not. So basically, since you eat it with your hands, that and watermelon, it's like, oh, you you got dirty hands. hands. You got dirty hands. This for the niggers. They eat fried chicken. They do this, that, (laughs) third. And that's where the stigma came from. That's where all the illustrations of blacks wearing blackface 
or blacks and blackface. Um, and that's funny there. because, <clears throat> and that's funny mm-hmm. because prior to, well, back in the olden days, when there was no util- utensils or plates, everybody were eating. Everybody was eating with their hands. Correct. Now, so, why does this? Why does this idea still hold traction since fried chicken is clearly a staple of the American diet? Surely KFC, Popeye's, churches, ain't, I mean, they're national change. So why is it still important? It's because of the supposed culinary obsessions with black folks. It's still a way to op- express racial <clears throat> racial contempt without being, you know, getting into serious trouble. So you can have these little microaggressions with chicken and making references without outwardly being racist because then you can come back and say oh but i mean everybody eats chicken so why are you so easily offended well these are the reasons because you guys made like half the shit that y'all half the shit is your own doing and then when we call you out on it you want to act surprised and everything Mm -hmm. exactly it's like uh you know the only reason that these things are even an issue is because Nobody really knows what white people eat. What do you eat? <laughs> what do you cook? What are you known for? What culture are you know? Like everything that you do, you rob from somebody else. So what exactly. is it? They eat their feelings. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why the majority of y'all motherfuckers is on 600 pound life with Dr. Period. Now. <laughs> Period. 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 I just can't stop uh, eating. Oh my god! <laughs> no. That I is this week's journey. That is this week's journey into the unseason. We'll be back <laughs> with the second half of the show on WRTR Real Talk Radio, the mm-hmm. podcast. What's the most dangerous thing happening in the country right now? That the kids are switching their gentle or their sexual things in in like grade school and stuff like that. Do you think that's a lot of people that are doing it? One's too many. So, yeah, I got to say, yeah. But one, you know, not even if the child, you know, has a say in it, you know, just whatever the parent says or whatever the school does, you know. What's the the scariest thing happening in the country right now? Uh, Letting all the immigrants come in. I think that uh, the wall should continue to be built. Uh, They're taking all the people's jobs. And that's my number one thing. Even in South Carolina, 2,000 miles from any border? Even so. You go to the uh, flea market in Somerville, nothing but Mexicans. Is that exciting, though, in a way, too, because it's a, that's the American story? That's not exciting to me. I think Americans should come first. But many of them are Americans once the, you know, they have children here and they are generationally move on. Um, what do you see as the biggest danger in America that nobody's talking about right now? everything this is not i don't want my children grandchildren to be raised in the world where it's headed take us to work take us on the go take us wherever you go wrtr real talk radio and we're back second half of the show kicks off now in honor of the holidays i found a list Uh So let me preface this by Uh the fact that the holidays are always a sketchy ass time of the year for me and frankly, mm-hmm. I'm whole ass tired of some of these like outdated traditions. I'm sick of y'all's bullshit that y'all continue <laughs> to hold on to. So I found a list uh, online of the top 10 traditions to skip. So with this list, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. This list, <clears throat> your holiday stop doing list. 10 traditions it's okay to skip this year. We ready? Uh-huh. Yep. All right, number one. <clears throat> Sending Christmas cards. Why are we still oh. sending Christmas cards this year? Like, I mean, I feel like they're outdated, period. I feel like if you want to send something, why? send it in an email form. Why are you still sending why? Christmas cards? Because people, like, people, like people still like to receive Christmas mm. cards. I actually received a Christmas card the other day. Well, it says whether or not to send out Christmas member. cards is a battle that's been raging to our house for many years now. I'm totally over it. Um, let's see. It says... Basically, they, they receive like 200 cards a year, and they're kind of over it. Oh, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, if I need a friend that's no Christmas, because I don't need all of that <laughs> junk in my house. Oh. All right. Next thing, all the right. Elf on the Shelf. 
Elf on the Ship. No, the little the little kids like that. My nephew even. Lord, those things nephew, are terrifying. So I don't fuck with it. And we have an Elf on the Shelf. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we haven't really no. Well, I I guess he's over that now, but a lot of kids I never, still like. Where did it even elf come from? Where did it this? come from? I oh, know. Do they know. have a black elf on the shelf? But the yes, elf, they the have elf? Snoop, yes, Snoop on the shoot. Snoop yeah. on the shoot on the, what is on the stoop? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one Snoop I want. On the stoop? Yes, they, they have, have it. Snoop on the stoop? Oh, you think God. I'm lying? Google. No, I, I, I'm, I'm actually I'm hoping sure they not. Do. Google I'm it. Sure I'm telling do. you. I'm oh, about to get wow. one. They've had it for a couple years now. Oh yeah, we definitely need to retire Elf on the Shelf then, because that shit it's just fucking scary. It's giving me Annabelle vibes, so I don't, you know I don't Not really Annabelle. Talk like that. Yeah, it's giving me Annabelle. <laughs> Alright, putting up outdoor lights is on this list also. And, oh, they do have Snoop on a stoop. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Add that to my Amazon shop list. Period, because it's on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't play with All right. And Snoop watching you. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I don't know if I like that. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, putting up outdoor lights. Is- Wait, is Snoop on that list? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no. guess we got to You know what? All? No, he's not. Mm-hmm. Okay. From what I could see. All right. So putting up outdoor lights, I do totally agree with because y'all and these electricity companies and these prices have gone batshit crazy. Don't know what's going on with you girls, but I do know that my motherfucking ass cannot afford to have no motherfucking lights sprawled out to impress who, who am I impressed? What am I doing it for? That's oh, sad. Man. You're supposed to be in the Christmas spirit. Why won't you why, decorate, why wouldn't you decorate the outside of your house? Because you're not paying for it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Going it's to the like, mall to me, is it on like trip. And to me, it sounds like you're trying to kill Christmas now. Oh, no. I didn't say don't celebrate. I said we need to retire some of them tradition. And here's the list. Um, going to the mall is on that list, believe it or <laughs> okay. not. That, that's okay. part of the Christmas spirit. Going to the mall? Yeah, to go shopping, to go buy stuff. I ain't been oh. to a mall in <laughs> over a year. Uh, yeah. Everybody else is shopping online now. Like, yeah, that is true. Deliver. That is true. First of all, yeah. That is true. Where has where time? where I stay at, they be shooting in the parking lot. Oh, exactly. You're right. You're right <laughs> about that. And they be fighting on the inside. So <laughs> yeah, you're right the about that. The only thing good in there is the cookie place. Right and if you listen to this yeah. and you live in the DMV, you know about that cookie PG place. County, you know, you know exactly it. which you know little exactly. mall I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. The only everybody thing everybody, everybody the know place. about that part. Yep. That's it. That's yep. all. Yep. Because yep. they got a Santa in there that look like somebody's crackhead uncle right now. <laughs> it is somebody's crackhead uncle. It's his part time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. I no, cannot. thank you. <laughs> he is all them niggas. He, he the Easter Bunny. He Santa Claus. <laughs> I cannot. I can't. I can't. Like every time a holiday roll around, that nigga is there for his shit. Oh my he god, he probably is too. He is. He, he is. Probably he is. is. It's the crackhead he uncle. All of them. Mm-hmm. He's there. <laughs> overspending is on this list. Overspending, um, I agree with that also, um, because uh, far too many of no, us. No, I agree with that. Yeah, overspending. Yeah. Yeah. Far too many of us are holiday ho ho hos, then become next year's o o os, and right. I'm just over. <laughs> <laughs> um, also on this list, matching pajamas. Wow, this person is more of a Baja mug than I am. People still do that. Families still do that. And then they take their pictures and post them on social media. Now that's goofy. I've <laughs> well, never had matching pajamas mm. with my family members ever in life. That seemed real unseasoned type behavior, but I don't know. It, I don't I know. Have, I guess it but no, nah, this new generation, they do it. Yeah. They start yeah. to do a lot of Christmas stuff like that's so on that list for yeah. content purposes. Yeah. Maybe that can so be. All so. I see, but nah. <laughs> Bye, humbug, all right. bitch. Bye, humbug. <laughs> all right, y'all about to y'all about to get mad at this one. Too many presents. That's on the list. So they say, I'm I'm, and you know what? It. Some people, I'm not mad at that. A lot of people do that all the time. They they like to have a lot of presents under their Christmas tree. You want to know why um, I said I'm not And then again, it? and then again, because they snap that picture and post it on you. social media for content. 
Why did you say that? Some of them boxes be fucking empty, too. Like, a lot of people just be flexing. And they just be doing that. And they just be like, oh, look at all the hundreds of presents I got. Like, since you wrap empty boxes, (laughs) and you tried to make it seem like you got this perfect-ass fucking life. No, bitch. You live a twin check like everybody fucking else. They sure do. They sure do. Yep. But that yeah, is, I, that is I, so I'm true. Not, I, I am not mad at it. Why? Because the most people get depressed around the holidays because they don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. You don't have enough money. You you get this person and this person and this person and this person and this person to get you gifts that you didn't exactly. ask for. You're going to want to feel obligated to gift back. Yep. Not everybody has go. it like that. So I understand why that's on the list. I'm not mad yep. at that. Um, stalking Pinterest. First off, I don't even go on Pinterest, so I don't know where this came from. But, Lyric, do you know anything about Pinterest? No, that's for people who have a thousand mm. cats in their house. And that's sure. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, also on this, pretty much. Moving on. Uh, stocking stuffers. Now, I'm I will say good. that with the legalization of weed in Maryland, uh, I got gifts for people this year, so I'm good. You know what? Like I like that's a perfect stocking stocking stuffer, and it's something that you gonna love. I cannot. Who's gonna be mad at me for giving them weed? Who gonna do it? I Listen. cannot. Not me. Not I. Exactly. Exactly. Not I. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate right. you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> exactly. That and them little mini uh, liquor bottles. Oh yeah, Child, that's a perfect thing to throw in. It dope. is. It so is. Yeah. It so is. Yeah. Like I got me a shot. Mm. And, they, and a happy new year. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> they say on this list, putting up all the decorations. Um, as long as it's not overboard, because some of y'all are competing with yourself. Like, yeah. what you doing? <laughs> what you doing with all of them lights on your house? Sky uh, mm. electricity mm-hmm. bill, sky high. Right. Mm. But you know they got they, they, they got they got to be the showstopper. They got to they want people. I to can't sleep. By you got a goddamn. Yeah, very true. No. Um, on this We're list right also, house. bringing cookies to the first responders on Christmas Eve. What's wrong with that? Um, she says every year we bake and decorate cookies, then deliver them to the local fire station and police station on Christmas Eve to say thank you for working to keep us safe while the rest of us What's are home with, with our families. They're always so gracious and always insist on showing us around the station and letting the girls get their picture taken on the truck. It's... um. <clears throat> The tradition, but they don't always know where the food comes from. I don't know. But no, what, I don't see nothing that wrong with that. I don't see That's nothing nice. wrong with that. Yeah. Well, who's hating on that? Like, right. get your <laughs> life. <laughs> get your life. Make some cookies <laughs> yourself. Like, what is wrong yeah. with you? I don't yeah. know, though, because I'm, I'm, I'm not even that much of a grinch. She let probably made because she made because ain't nobody making her cookies. No, let me say this. I you will say that I will <laughs> say that in office environments, when people start handing out, you know, holiday pastries and stuff like that, I'm always like, oh, thank you. But if it's you like Kathy, it <laughs> if it's like Kathy in your <laughs> office that has like 20 cats, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you be like, oh, you be like, like no. mm. I'm like, hold on, did you bake things? If I didn't see that it came from, if it ain't got no brand label on it, it's just like, Kathy, right. oh yeah, me and Mittens made this. Did you? <laughs> Mittens? Oh, Did you? Mittens going right in the track. Exactly. Yeah. Fresh. Mittens going right in the track. Yeah, that's why they call, that's why they call, what's that little thing cats do? Would they, uh, yeah, that's why they call it, uh, what they call that shit? Baking bread or some shit? I don't know. Something. Mm. Anyways, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's disgusting. <laughs> All right, unwrapping and playing new family games. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. That's There's fun. nothing wrong with that. Me and my, me and my um, sister, me and my sisters, we do that all the time. Mm-hmm. And Home Alone and all of the Christmas movies. They said I watched you them. should revamp. That's what you're them. supposed to do. <laughs> I they said them. you should revamp them. Uh, These people are clearly just angry. No, like I watched The Grinch yeah. that stole Christmas, the original one. I watched the mm-hmm. one with Jim Curry. I watched The Nightmare Before Christmas because mm-hmm. that's my shit. I watched yeah. all the Christmas yeah. movies. I watched well, all of them. For all of you holiday humbug people that, you know, there you go. Hopefully you're yeah. happy. Oh, they did give a list of five things they think are worth keeping, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, up next, Wi-Fi. We'll be right back.
One of the compliments that I always receive from you lovely individuals is that you admire the way that I use my voice and that you wish you could do the same. And I try to remind you guys that I'm nobody special. I'm just a regular degular kind of bitch who speaks about issues that she's passionate about. So I am excited to help announce the Community Creator Initiative. This project will provide creators or aspiring creators with micro grants to cover issues that are happening in your state. Specifically, if you live in Pennsylvania or Nevada, you guys could receive monthly grants up to $2,000 to talk about issues such as current events, economic justice, environmental justice, LGBTQ rights, etc. So if you have an active social media account with a minimum of 1,000 followers, then you can apply at the link in my bio and I will also put it on screen. Don't say I never gave y'all nothing. Why do you have roaches? The why, the why, 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 why do my children hate me? WRTR Real Talk Radio. Why did my vagina burn? The truth is out there. Explaining the unexplained. We're answering why to the questions you want to know by taking your tweets at WRTR Radio. We take your emails at WRTRRadio at gmail.com. And we take your Facebook messages over on a Facebook page, WRTR Real Talk Radio. Oh. This is the Y Files. Remember, the truth is out there. I'm going to hit it off. Black from DC wants to know why do y'all goofy ass dudes do that long, drawn out ass walk? When crossing a busy street or highway. Oh, a man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I will be in rush hour, tra- especially here in Baltimore. You will be trying to get off MLK is like, oh, uh, it's like, oh my God. You will be there and it'll be some dude sitting there with his pants sagging. Okay, do you? Mm-hmm. You're swag. But why do y'all do that? Why is there no pep in your step when crossing the road? You have stopped traffic. You know that cars are waiting. You know that it is rush hour. And you sitting there looking down at your phone, doing that silly ass little pimp walk, trying to look cute. For what? Who is going to stop traffic and go, hey, boy, I never get your number. Nobody's going to do it. Please stop this. Right. Y'all look dumb. Right. And you are a goddamn traffic hazard. So, yes, Black (laughs) from D.C., I definitely relate to you. Why? Because the truth is out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mine comes from me. And I'm real, real mad about this because this is who I used to bank with. And now I had to get another bank because I know you fucking lying. You got to get dragged. Why Navy Federal denied more than 50% of black mortgage applicants, even if they they made more money than their approved white applicants? And I have Navy Federal. And we I have Navy, I have Navy Federal too. Yep. Yeah, but we always knew oh, Navy. I mean, Navy, I, come on. Account closed because mm. you got me all the way. Fuck that. Mm. <laughs> so you wasn't gonna give me no loan, and when I wanna when I get good and ready to buy this house that I'm about to get for this coin, I'm about to get. Oh yeah, mm. all right, bye. Yep. Bye. Navy Federal. You bitches. Uh, why? Because <laughs> truth is out there, and y'all sucks. That's why I switched. Next. Oops. Uh. My why comes from me. Oh, no. Why do parents, well, mothers, <clears throat> oh, no, feel the need to exploit their child, their little children on social media cursing? Mm. Why do they do that? I don't find that funny at all. Um, because they're trifling. Yeah, I've never been they're a fan of the man. videos where your baby's cussing out somebody or something like she cussing out. Little Katie, this one, her number this, two pencil or whatever. Like, I've never been a fan of that. Yeah, this um one video I was looking at, the lady was in the car, mother was in the car, and the little girl was in the back of the car, back mm-hmm. seat. And she kept saying something to her daughter. And the little girl said, bitch, leave me alone. What? <laughs> and she, the mama mm-hmm. laughed and said, what? She said, bitch, leave me alone. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, why? Why? I've seen one. Why? That's how she was feeling. I've seen one where this where this kid was sitting in the back seat, and he was like, "I really love my mom. I don't call her nothing, nothing but beautiful. Ain't that right, bitch?" (laughs) While she's driving, and I said, "Oh my god!" Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. 
and you know that they was not. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Of course. Y'all kids of course. are real gone. Whole Woo. real gone. Y'all kids <laughs> real. These kids out here real bold. Woo. And they'll nice. be like, and I'll be like, Sarah, don't say that. Oh my God. <laughs> so, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Oh. Nice. No, they just nice be like, Hey. Yeah. They be like, hey, hey. watch it. Shit. Fuck you, fuck out. you, fuck you. <laughs> Cut it, <laughs> you cut it off. You cut it off. Cut it out. Kids, don't make me pull over. But don't make me pull wow, over. Why? You ain't gonna do nothing. Right. Um, <laughs> no, why? Now, because because the truth is out, is out there. <laughs> and that wraps it up for this week's Why Files. We're always yes. answering why for you at WRTR Radio on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. Chicken Man, you got time in this day for one more segment? I believe I do, yes. All mm-hmm. right, the news to make you nauseous is up next. We'll All be right, right back. Now, Walmart, okay? I like y'all prices and shit, but I dread going in that motherfucker. And I'm a hood motherfucker, but some shit that goes on in Walmart, bitch, make me nervous. Hillbillies and trailer park Republicans and shit, bitch. I'm in that motherfucker, one motherfucker day lady come up to me and say, hey, you know where the seal is? I said, bitch, the what? I said, they got seals in motherfucking Walmart, bitch, okay, yeah. You know when I said ask that bitch again, she said it's slow. She said jail. I said what? She said jail. I said oh the jail. I said nah, ma'am. I don't know where that. That don't work here. Bitch had one tooth and a toothpick in her mouth. Yeah, it's some strange shit going on at Walmart. Let me get what I came for and get out of here. You got one motherfucker in one hour doing TikTok videos. You got another motherfucker coming up to you with a microphone asking you survey questions. You be like, bitch, am I at the community fair? It's just too much going on in Walmart. Then they don't give a fuck about their employees. They got the oldest motherfucking lady in the senior apartment working there. At the door, checking receipts. And she's security. Then you got the big bitch coming in with the short motherfucking spandex, pink shorts on, brown tank top, and a bonnet. You know what she coming to do. Her and her other sister and the boys. They coming that motherfucker walking hard, breathing hard, and frowning. You already know what they up to. They in that motherfucker to check out. As soon as they grab all the shit that they want, what they do with all the shit in their arms. No car. They ain't going to no register. They going over there to Miss Daisy. And she's sitting there, you know what I'm saying, looking confused and scared. Well, where's your receipt, babe? They don't give a fuck about how nice this old lady sound. They want this shit and they want it now, okay? So she trying to stop them and be a good citizen so she can get employee of the month. They can put her picture on the wall and shit. They done pushed her, knocked her hearing aid out, her dentures out her motherfucking mouth, and her glasses off. And they power walk heavy out the motherfucking door. And then the manager gonna have audacity to come over here. Don't offer to help her up, asking her questions while she on the floor on her back and shit. Well, Grace, did you see anything? Grace looking up, shaking her head. Mm-mm. And he mad at Grace and shit. How you mad? They done knocked that motherfucking woman memory pills out her pocket and everything. Everything. Yeah, Walmart, y'all gotta get it together. I don't know what y'all need to do, but y'all need to do something. Y'all need a metal detective, SWAT at the door, and background check these motherfucking customers before they come in. Put your thumb right here. Boop, boop, boop. Baby, you can't come in here. Yeah, you gotta let them know. And now, now. Say what? Now. News to make you nauseous on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Let's go. All right, Tigger Man is gone for this evening because we had some technical difficulties in between there, but we're going to go ahead with news to make you nauseous. You ready, Miss Blair? I absolutely am. Are you going to kick it off first or me? Which one? I can do it. Sure. Go for it. All right. Say what, Utah. Say what? (laughs) A popular Utah mother of six that was once on a YouTube channel called Eight Passengers has pleaded guilty to charges that she abused and starved two of her children. What? The channel was basically centered off of parenting advice. Oh my God. Mm. Mm. She pled guilty to four felony counts of second degree aggravated child abuse and likely faces a prison sentence. The judge presiding over the case tentatively scheduled a, a sentencing hearing for her on February 20th. Wait, so um, she listen. made her career out of telling other people how to raise their children and she was doing this? Okay, mm-hmm. sure. sure. Yep. So her and her husband were arrested on August 30th of this year after her 12-year-old son escaped from the house in southern Utah, city of mm-hmm. Ivins, 
The boy asked a neighbor to call the police. According to 911, the call was released by the St. George Police Department. The boy was emaciated and had duct tape around his ankles and wrists, but wouldn't say why, the caller reported. I think he's been detained, the caller said, as his voice was breaking up. He's obviously covered in wounds. The 10-year-old daughter was also found in the house. Both children were taken to the hospital, and the four youngest children were taken into state custody. This is sad. So both of them are charged with this. Um, wow. The 12-year-old boy told investigators that um, the mother put ropes on his ankles and wrists, and they were oh they were used, and that they used Kanye Kanye paper and honey to dress the wounds caused by the ropes, according to the search. Um, Warren. Oh my yes. god. Are yes. these okay? Are these black people? No, they're not. Uh, okay, they we are came from the those. Caucasus Mountains. Now that uh, sounds like <laughs> some shit they come up with. But go ahead. The YouTube channel, which started in 2015, ended after seven years. In court on Monday, the mother wore gray and white jail clothing and stood and closed her eyes and took a deep breath before pleading guilty to each of the first three charges individually on the fourth she fought back some emotion before saying with my deepest regret and sorrow for my family and my children i plead guilty wow so yeah oh. she she done did it that's what it is up. damn wow that's not really everybody weird. deserves children you know it does saying? they don't they don't i mean like I, i've never had the desire to be a parent but one of the reasons in that very long list of why I don't is the mm -hmm. fact that I just don't think that I'm the parenting type. And I think a lot of people, especially for straight people, you find yourselves, you know, in parenting situations that aren't planned, you know, often. Right. But, you know, I just can't imagine. Oh, gosh. Wow. Ain't that oh. it's, mm -mm -mm. it's very Disgusting. unseasoned. Wow. Savages. They're just savages. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. All right, say what turkey? Say what? Not turkey leg either. All right, police <laughs> uh, police arrested the boyfriend of a woman who fell 100 feet to her death during a clifftop marriage proposal. So basically, what ha happened was, I'm paraphrase this one instead of reading y'all this, because this is a long article. So what ha happened was, they got up there and he was doing that big epic, you know, I'm a propose to you kind of thing. You know, that thing that all the girls be tripping over. Oh my God, he proposed to me. I'm about to be a wife. Wifey for lifey. Oh my God, Lyric, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, Brad took me up to the top of the mountain. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, yeah, it was great. And like, we were in Turkey and everything. And yeah, yeah. And, and like, while we were up there, I got on one got knee on. and he was like, hey, you want to marry this dick? And I was like, no. <laughs> and when this happened, you know, an you argument know, ensued. We started going back and forth with one another. You guys, that's terrible. Yeah, and so it, embarrassing. It got, it got physical, and he pushed me a hundred feet to my death, allegedly. Oh my gosh! So I'm really like talking to you through a psychic right now because I'm so dead, <laughs> girl, girl. <laughs> like, oh my god, like, I can't. I'm, I'm Who fucking, fucking does that? This hmm. white man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is oh currently being held in custody pending a trial. She, no, actually, um, so <laughs> he said we chase it to every romantic moment. Like, basically, like when this hit, he hit the distraught, uh, grieving fiance thing. It was like, oh my God, I did this to be, you know, so epic and so this, that, and the third, and she fell to her death, <laughs> and I'm just so devastated, blah, blah, blah. But then people started pulling up receipts like, nigga, her family was like, you did this. Like, there's no... There's no. There's debate. a life insurance policy, isn't it? It has and to be. I don't know. But I do know is, yeah. There's, yeah, it probably is. It's he probably was up. like, bloop! 
<laughs> she slept. She Just slept. Give it a She's falling nut. and she ain't never getting up. Like nut. that's wild. You're yeah. wild for that. Oh, well, if you want these and more nauseating news stories, follow us over on X at WRTR Radio. We seldom use it, but we do use our Instagram, WRTR Real Talk Radio. I'm also on those platforms at M-A-R-C-U-S-S-M-O-O-T. That's Margaret Smoot. And hey, it's your girl, Miss Liv Bravado. And again, you can find me on all social media platforms, which is Twitter, well, X now, I guess. I, I, I ain't calling it that because Elon yeah. Musk can be Musk. Go somewhere with that. He can do um, that. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, mm-hmm. Lyric Bravado, same name everywhere. Everywhere you are. Except for OnlyFans because I ain't got one of those. That's Tigger Man's thing. She ain't over there, but definitely follow Tigger sure Man is. also at Tigger Man 82. And on uh, Facebook, I believe it, Tony Tigaman Nelson. So up next, we're giving you uh, the trigger warning now. Um, that portion, real talk, it's the trigger warning. So if you're sensitive to uh, the subject of suicide, we'll holler at y'all next year. You know, on next year's first episode. But, you know, for those of y'all that want to stick around, we'll be right back. Let's get this out the way. Sis, 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 woman, sis, woman, sis, woman. I don't give a fuck if you're offended by that term. I have a pussy too and I'm not. You know how some men go looking for unsavory memes or videos of black women so they can go on podcasts and call us all trash? That's the very same thing that cis women like Jess Hilarious do to trans women. I don't understand what she said that was wrong. Well, let me explain, boo-boo. The trans woman in that video never said that they have periods just that non-cis women do, you know, trans men, for example. And even if she did, matter of fact, let's say she said, fuck you bitches, I bleed better than you. If I was out and somebody cornered me and said, give me your fucking purse, I have depression, you have to give it to me. Would I, a reasonable human being, conclude that the mental health movement has gone too far because people with depression are purse snatchers? Or would I check the motherfucker stealing my purse? Y'all can never discuss talking points made by trans women without invalidating the entire community, yet y'all claim not to have a problem with them. Be indubitably the fuck for real. She said those women belong in fucking straight jackets because she misunderstood what a trans woman was saying. And in her video, she said, who's fighting for us? Us meaning cis women in this scenario. When one, she has a very large platform and I ain't never heard her talk about our liberation, have you? And two, trans women don't have the societal standing to wage war on us if they wanted to. They're being stripped of their rights and murdered too. There is a war on women. It's perpetrated by the cis men who are in power, but y'all are blaming it on trans women who experience misogyny too. All right, and we're back. So this portion of the show may be a trigger warning for some of you. So if you're sensitive to the subject of suicide, again, we'll holler at y'all next year. But if you're still listening, I want to share something that was shared with Miss Lyric Tigerman and I. Out of respect for the deceased, we have omitted the names, but wow. An email was received from a doctor. Apparently, he must have emailed everybody in his address book. But the email reads, hello, friends. On December 5th, 2023, my dear wife, the love of my life, and, the, and I left this world together as we have done everything over the past four decades. She was dying of liver failure, and I had no desire to continue without her. She was the most supportive, loyal, loving, beautiful mate any man could wish for. Our many vacations together in our wonderful native country of Mexico were the most blissful moments of my life. What she and I have done is the natural way of things. Suicide has been demonized by a medical industry that hates it when someone dies without letting, without leading to depleting their victim savings and insurance and by a uh, religion industry that hates losing paying customers. If she, the wife, were capable of writing her own goodbye note. I know she would want to thank um, to thank her wonderful clients, whom she loves very much. She would also 
<clears throat> want to send her love to friends and family members such as, and you know, he goes about naming all the people. Love to you all from the both of us. And then, you know, he gives her her name and his, and then he goes, P.S. Please email, gives his brother's right. name, about this so he can arrange to have our bodies removed before they stink up the place. Also, please notify my brother, leaves the email address. I didn't email them myself so they wouldn't feel any guilt over not responding in time to stop us and to prevent the police from arrive, you know, arriving to spoil our departure. Thank you. That is wild. So when I read this, I was shook for so many reasons, but I wanted to ask how... You know, well, I wanted Tigger Man to be a part, but, you know, he had to go. But I wanted to ask how y'all truly feel about this departure. I'll never say that suicide is the answer to anything, but I've had people in my life that have chosen to end it all, and, you know, prematurely. And I've always kind of held a sense of anger towards them, and I haven't been able to let it go. But reading this almost made me think twice about my stance and how I felt about it. When we look at suicide, most of us are on the outside looking in. And we don't always know the factor that led to our loved ones, you know, doing this. I mean, we look at these types of situations and think, I mean, even with this guy, you look at him. He was a doctor. You know what I'm saying? So you, you kind of go in your mind and you'd be like, hmm, I mean, what led to this? How did, you know, I don't know. <sighs> How you feel, Miss Lyric? <clears throat> I understand. Mm -hmm. But I still have to take the stance of life is precious. It is. Um, and although, like, when people experience this type of pain and hurt, for, especially from a spouse or a child or any type of love, loved one that they were... Um, really attached to sometimes people do have this sense of if I if this person is no longer here I no longer want to be here but you have to realize that those initial feelings most of the time with time they do pass healing takes time grieving is a process and people don't realize and I understand what, what you just said that you feel like you were angry mm -hmm. that's a real feeling too because what people don't realize is when they commit suicide although you are doing something that you think is right because you're overwhelmed with life and you don't want to like deal with the things that you can you feel as though you no longer deal with Mm -hmm. When you do things like that, you may not know who that you've impacted on this earth, but you're leaving trauma behind. So when you when people take their life, their family has to deal with that. Their children have to deal with that. Their friends have to deal with that. So although I understand I feel in my personal opinion that is the most selfish thing that you can do and I can know and I can speak for myself because I have been there I have had those thoughts before you know what I'm saying but what I had to do was realize that hey after I leave who's gonna be left here to pick up the pieces my kids wow. my mom my dad, my brother, my sister, my friends, my close friends, that'll devastate them, which is going to start a cycle of trauma. So I just, I just don't, I just don't think that is a, a solution. It's, it's a permanent solution. You can never come back from that. It's once you're gone, you're gone. You get one life. So I just encourage people who are going through, especially during the holidays, because like I said, this is a tough time for people. Most family members die around Christmas. Amen. A lot of holidays. And this is a hard time for people financially. A lot of people lose their jobs around this time. It's fucked up. A lot of people lose their homes <laughs> around this time. And it's just very difficult around the holiday. So people find themselves being depressed. Um, 
but I recommend you call the suicide hotline. Um, you also can text them from your mobile device, 988. Um, they'll send you a link. You can chat with someone 24 seven. Um, but just, just know that regardless of whatever the case may be, killing yourself is not the solution. It really is not. It's actually the start of a, of a more problem, a more serious problem. That's going to keep building, keep building, keep building because then your kids, you know what I'm saying? If you have them or your friends or whoever the case may be, they'll have to deal with that and they'll internalize that. And then that guilt, oh, maybe I didn't do enough. I didn't see the sign. You see what I'm saying? Right. I do. It's, 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 you know, a, a, a cycle. I look at that, but then, you know, in a conversation that I was having about this in a private conversation, um, one of the things that was brought up was, well, I mean, that's how so-and-so and such-and-such such were. And because they were these people, you know, I guess, I don't know, I guess they were trying to make it seem... I guess Romeo, Romeo and Juliet-ish. But, I mean, that was called a tragedy for a reason. So it's still just selfish. To pack, it's still you know, selfish. just to piggyback off Miss Lyric, I mean, it's never the And solution. here's the thing. He told on himself in, in, in the letter, too. Okay. I couldn't send you this email because I felt too guilty. So you know what you're doing is wrong, in a sense. Right? Because in order for you to feel guilt, you have to feel like you, you did something wrong. Mm. Yeah. I just, mm, it's sadder all across the board. It is, it is. And to receive that email, ooh, just chill. Wow. You can just That's never cool. know what's going on in people's lives. and You don't. Uh, for them and to have sent it to everybody in the list and Wow. And that's like, just like you say, you know what I'm saying? Do, do better, be better. Like treat people with kindness. Like you never know what could be that last straw to break the camel's back to make somebody right. do something like that. Right. I mean, huh. that show snapped. People have been like cooking dinner. Then all of a sudden something happened and boom, murder scene. <laughs> Very much so. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't take much. It doesn't. doesn't take much. Uh, I just, for all of y'all that may be going through it, just keep these things in mind. If, like, it, it's never the answer. It, it just, wow. I'm just, that letter and just reading it again kind of just shook me up a little bit. I'm just like, wow. This person literally emailed everybody in the contact list and was like, so I'm checking out and thanks for whatever part of my life you paid or played I'm sorry I would be so disturbed wow. by that I am that's some traumatized can you um, get, put yourself in, in their family's shoes for a minute mm. imagine waking up thinking mm. that you're going to talk to this person thinking that you know that you're going to see them whatever the case may be Imagine waking up, logging into your laptop, logging into your mobile device, opening up your email and reading something like that. Ooh. I just, that's wild. It is. How can you do that to somebody that you love? Mm. Uh, wow. Oh. Huh. Y'all, I'm sorry, but I know this is a comedy uh, podcast and everything, and we be trying to make y'all laugh, but Jesus, I can't even think of an inappropriately timed joke to make in this, because it's just sad all around. It is, it is. I mean, I did kind of chuckle at this body stinking up the place. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you throw that in there? I'm just like... <laughs> Like, well, you I know, he had a sense out. of humor. He, he had did. a sense of humor, but come on, dude. Like, ugh. I just feel like, for whoever like has to witness um, finding them. Because if you've never um, seen a deceased person, I'm telling you, it will change your life. I unfortunately have seen that. 
I mean, I'm not talking already in the casket. I'm talking about mm-hmm. in the house, dead on the floor. It is something that you do not want to witness. I wouldn't witness. I wouldn't put that on my worst enemy to witness. It's just, it's it's not, it's not something that you want to see. It's very unfortunate. Oh, so before we get out of here and wrap this show up. Again, I want to remind you that the suicide hotline is 988. It's available just like 911 24-7. That's too many numbers for you. I get it. I did 911 24-7. The number <laughs> to suicide, 988. If you're Absolutely. having, if you're down, if you're just feeling like you don't want to be here, if you maybe just, you know, are toying with like whatever you're going through. If this is in your list of options as a solution, how about you give these nice people over at 988 a phone call just to see if they can, you know, do something or if they can, you know, perhaps have, you know, maybe you never know what resources they have. You might find yourself deciding against it by the end of the conversation. And that's the Mm -hmm. whole point. Yeah. And if you're not tech savvy, if you're not tech savvy, dial 1-800-442-HOPE. And you can speak to someone right then and there. And with that, it wraps up. And that would be 20 episodes for us this year, Miss Lyric. Hey, even though I was here for half of them because I was down and out. But guess what? A bitch back. 2024 is going in. There you go. Balls deep. (laughs) Making us water. All of that. Uh -uh. Diarrhea. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. But again, 2024, lots of great things. Um, yeah, we got it planned. And (laughs) we will holla at y'all then. Reminder, don't strut around and stunt in borrowed shoes. Your actions tell everything about your character. Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and God willing. We will see y'all in 2024. Happy New Year. Bye. WRTR Real Talk Radio. Segways this week featuring creators Goddess Mia, Lonnie B, and Chris the Author.